and welcome to Somerville Highlander Ladies Basketball on Somerville Educational Channel 15. I'm Todd Harmon alongside Braden Moriarty. And we have a consolation game today as the townies of Charlestown are playing against, of course, your Highlanders of Somerville. Both teams losing yesterday in the Holiday Hoop Fest action. So today they're in the consolation game to open out today's basketball action. So Braden, what do the uh, Lady Highlanders need to do to get on the winning side of the ledger today? Well, they just got to take care of the ball, get good shots, you know, uh, just play their game. They rely on defense. Uh, and in Hustle, they can definitely uh, expose the Charlestown Townies. By the way, love that team. Love name. that name. It's fantastic. Yes. Uh, but uh, it's going to be a much more even uh, game, I think, today. We're going to see a lot of focus on defense, rebounding. Just basic ball control, I think, is going to be a big deal. Not, neither team has a lot of height. Right. Uh, I believe that everybody that's listed as a uh, center for the Charlestown Townie uh, checks in at the uh, uh, skyscraping height of 5'8". Yes, 5'8". So, uh, rebounds will be a plenty for uh, the Highlanders. Let's just see if they can control the ball and uh, control the uh, tone of the game. Absolutely. Well, we saw yesterday the Lady Highlanders did a good job in terms of ball control. They do have a lot of guards uh, that, that are able to control the ball. Looking at the leading scorers from yesterday, it's a lot of those backcourt players. Melina Pimentel with nine points, Destiny Augustine with uh, six points, Emily Sabatino with four, and Taylor Casey also chipping in four points yesterday for the Lady Highlanders. Of course, the Lady Highlanders lost yesterday to Hampshire Regional by the score of 73-31. to 31. Uh, Child Charlestown lost to Archbishop Williams by the score of 78 to 15. So hopefully the uh, Lady Highlanders can keep that offensive total down once again for Charlestown. Yeah. We're going to uh, break away to the uh, announcements as well as the starting lineups and uh, the national anthem. We'll be right back momentarily here at the desk. Sporting events are safe and enthusiastic. Give honor and respect to student athletes, coaches, officials, families, and fans by appreciating outstanding plays by all teams and athletes, supporting decisions by coaches and officials, Showing you our yeah, role model on the court and in the stands. Using only positive language and gestures. Removing your hat and remain standing for the entire national anthem and entering and exiting the area safely. Not doing your part to assure several athletic events are safe and positive. They result in being told to leave or being banned from local sporting events. And now the starting line is for the Charlestown Townies. Number three, Riona Miles Willis. Number five, Monique Duncan. Number three, Yulitza Sepulveda. Number 14, Yuritska Berlingeri. And number 30, Brianna Hubert. The town is coached by Katrina Jackson. And now the starting lineup for your Somerville Highlanders. At forward, number two, Destiny Augustine. At forward, number three, Jamila Joseph. At guard, number five, Melina Pimentel. At guard, number 20, Jennifer Cremoni. And at guard, number 31, Emily Sabatino. The Highlanders are coached by Mr. Paul O'Halloran. Ladies and gentlemen, we ask you to please rise and remove your hats for the singing of our national anthem by Geneva Joseph. So 
was the phenomenal singing of Jamima Joseph, of course a starter for the Lady Highlanders. So not only does she uh, start on the basketball team, but also just an incredible rendition of the national anthem as well. Yeah, she uh, can pretty much do it all. I believe that she's also taking tickets up at the front door uh, as people <laughs> come in late. I don't know how she's gonna do that when she's uh, starting for uh, the tip off, but she'll find a way. Jamima is extremely talented and the rest of the team is as well. You, you know, you put them with the uh, captains who are the rest of the starters. You've got uh, our, our old favorites, Melina Pimentel, Jennifer Cremoni, and Emily Sabatino, uh, who are returning back uh, this year uh, for another season of Lady Hoop. But they also bring in two new fresh starters with Destiny Augustine, who we saw yesterday uh, really uh, play very sharply, and mm -hmm. Jamima, who uh, was great on the boards and really played uh, above herself. It's going to be really interesting to see how that they mesh with the other starters as they get this young season going. No doubt about that. I mean, I'm very interested to see Jamima Joseph today specifically because yesterday there was just too much size on the interior, mm -hmm. with, especially with uh, Katie O'Connor got in some early foul trouble. So I'll be interested to see what Jamima can do on the boards today when she is pretty much one of the taller people out on the floor. You can see she's out there ready to take the tip against uh, Zaditska Berlingeri. Nicely done. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> I do not promise it will be like that the remainder of the day. I had a question mark next to that. Okay. Good to know. Zadit Zaditska. 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 All right, and we are tipped off here at Broomfield House. Tip is controlled by Melina Pimentel. She brings it down into the left corner. They'll set their offense. As Sabatino has it at the top of the key over to Cremoni. There's Destiny Augustin with it. Nice, nice pass there by Augustine as she's able to find Got Sabatino down on the left block for the two. Great vision down low. Keep doing that. That's a great way to start off the game. Uh, you can see it because Augustine and Cremoni are uh, the two primary ball handlers along with Pimentel. Uh, three great ball handlers for the Highlanders. They haven't had that. They didn't have it all last season. It's nice to see that they have it this year. So we see the uh, Charlestown offense for the first time as they're working their offense. Jamima with some pressure defense in the corner helped out by Cremoni. The right wing shot is up. It is no good. Rebound brought down by Augustine. And down to Jamima Joseph on the break. And she will finish with her first points of the day. Nice, clean, good getting the ball up the court. Uh, nice vision, uh, getting the uh, half court pass up. A little more of that, please, Highlanders. No doubt about it is team captain uh, Miles Will Willis, number three there, holding, handling the ball handling duties. Left-handed shot there is no good. Sabatino with a long rebound. And the Highlanders are out running again. Obviously, Coach O'Halloran wants them running the floor today as Joseph gets it down on the left block. Her shot is no good. Rebound comes away to Miles Willis. I like the look, trying to get it down to Jamima, uh, making her the focal point of the offense right now. That's a smart move by Coach O'Halloran. Miles Willis taking on three Highlanders by herself. The shot is up, it's no good. It's out of bounds off of the Townies. So that one came off of Berlingeri. Keep it simple, that's that's great. Looking for uh, Jamima down in the low post. They haven't been found a way to stop that yet until it breaks. Ride that. Don't fix it, it ain't broken yet. There's Augustine with the ball. Works down the right hand side, gets a screen from Cremoni there. She'll kick it back to Cremoni on the give and go. A little bit of a delayed give and go, worked beautifully as Cremoni had no defender in front of her and she finishes it nicely to give the Highlanders a six point lead. Timeout's going to be taken by the Townies. Yeah, nice look, nice design play. Uh, a little give and go action, getting Cremoni to drive the lane. That's what they need to do. Uh, they did it uh, to some success uh, in the game yesterday uh, against Hampshire, but uh, Hampshire. But uh, to see them do that, that's, uh, especially when they don't have any height down low for the Charlestown Townies, uh, exploit that as, to your best of your ability. You're already up to six points. It's a great start for the Highlanders. No doubt about it. And what we're seeing as we're watching the replay here, of uh, that great pass. As Augustine looking there, that nice bounce pass right to Cremoni as she cut to the basket there. We're seeing two, two starters from yesterday's game that did not get on the scoring ledger yesterday. Cremoni was held shut out throughout the game, and Jamima Joseph did not score any points in yesterday's game, although she, both of them were very active defensively and on the boards. Well, today, immediately, Coach O'Halloran's getting them the ball, getting them near the basket, and getting them some points right off the bat. Yeah, smart move. Get everybody involved, and you can see that looking the pass first. Uh, that's something that we didn't really see from the Highlanders last year, or especially even last game last night. Uh, but uh, to see them uh, 
put a focal point on hitting the open person as they try to drive uh, the lane here. Get the easy shots. They're going to give them to you. Take them. Absolutely. As the Highlanders have come out to this 6 nothing lead to begin the action today, two minutes gone from the first quarter. As Charlestown able to break the small amount of pressure the Highlanders applied. Highlanders dropping back, it looks like, into a 2-3 zone, and that's going to be out of bounds as they tried to pass it across the zone. It goes off of the Townies as the Highlanders will keep possession here, or get possession here. There we it's go. Augustine up to Melina Pimentel. She's running the floor. She's got nobody in front of her. Goes up for the left-handed layup, and Pimentel it is good. Two. Yep, rely on your speed. Molina is definitely the speedster out there, and she can dribble the ball. Uh, was able to go unchecked all the way up and get the easy layup. Oh, and, and there's there Melina Pimentel picking the pocket right there. She's trying to go in unassisted, and she hits it. Pimentel for two. Look out, it's a barn burner. What do we got, 10 nothing already? 10 nothing for the Lady Highlanders. Just two and a half minutes into this quarter as the Lady Highlanders running the floor very, very well today. You couldn't ask for a better start. Let's keep it up. Charlestown trying to get their offense going. It's Jamima Joseph with the steal there. Feeds it up to Pimentel. Pimentel ahead of the game and into the basket. Look at that. Just excellent defense on one end. Pays off in the offensive end for Molina. That's, uh, what, six quick points for her? Four quick points? Yeah, six points for uh, Molina, as a matter of fact. Half of the points, uh, half of the output for the Lady Highlanders. As Miles kicks it off, the right wing shot is up. It's no good. Rebound pulled away by Mo Monique Duncan. They feed it back out to uh, Brianna Hubert. Hubert's shot is up. It's no good. All right. And rebound controlled, tipped back in to the Lady Highlanders. Pimentel out ahead of the action. She's defended down low, but she <laughs> hits it and will go to the line for the old school three point play. Okay, I'm going to run out to the half court and just start to fan her off because she's a little too warm right now. She's a little hot. Very, very hot right now. Melina Pimentel using that speed and that uh, ball controlling ability. You see right here on the replay as she goes in <laughs> against the defender, gets the foul, and makes the bucket. That foul is going to go against uh, Sepulveda. Yeah, you can see the confidence paying out for the Lady Highlanders right off the bat here. Molina knows that nobody can keep up with her. Uh, she charged right headlong into uh, two defenders and was able to put it up. Knowing that she wasn't going to get blocked, was able to put in the bucket. Excellent finish there for Pimentel. Let's see if she can complete the three-point play. Shot is up, and it is good. So 15 to nothing is the lead for the Lady Highlanders as Jin Cremoni applies the pressure in the full court. Miles Willis able to handle that pressure as she comes across the timeline. Lady Highlanders drop back into their zone, but it's an extended zone defense that they're using here. We got a foul right there. It's going to go against, I think, Jen Cremoni. Full foul number 20. Jennifer yep, that's Cremoni. going to go against Jen Cremoni. That's her first, team's first. Important thing here for the Highlanders is not to get into unnecessary foul trouble. Uh, it doesn't look like Charlestown's really that confident in driving in as they turn the ball over right here. And we're out for another run with Molina. Pimentel out of the head of the action yeah, once again. Doing. She puts it up and in. 17 to nothing now the Lady Highlanders lead. Four minutes remaining here in the first quarter. That smiles all around for the girls as they uh, get back on defense here. Uh, they like to start their off to. Oh. Trying to get a little size in there as Charlestown as Pimentel fouls uh, Makaya Anderson. So foul number five, Molina Pimentel. That's going to be Pimentel's first foul. Second team foul on the Lady Highlanders. Townie's trying to get something going here, coming in with uh, a little more height to uh, deal with the fact that they haven't been able to get the ball even into the paint yet to get a solid shot off in this game so far. Anderson has it there as she gets her pocket picked by Jamima Joseph, feeds it forward to Emily Sabatino. Shot is no good, but Joseph comes away with the rebound in amongst a whole bevy of Townies. The three-pointer is put up by Augustine, no good. And that's going to go out of bounds off of Augustine. So it will be the Townies ball trailing here 17 to nothing against the Lady Highlanders. Good first look and good positioning by Jamima to get the uh, offensive rebound there. It didn't go, but uh, the fact that they got multiple shots on that possession. Quick timeout on the floor as Jamima was tying her, her <laughs> tying her shoes. She has so many jobs, she's running out of her shoes. Right, exactly. So she's got to get them tied up tight. <laughs> Miles Willis with the ball. Defended by Sabatino. Feeds oh, it inside. Nice. nice anticipation there. As Destiny takes the ball, feeds it to Sabatino. Sabatino's fouled as she goes towards the bucket. That foul is going to go against Miles Willis. That's going to be her first personal. Yeah, keep pushing the issue. That's uh, 
the up-tempo style right here, the Lady Highlanders is really uh, working out Shots for them. Foul number three. It's the second Ohio team Wolves. foul on the Townies. It's checking into the game is number 12 for the Lady Highlanders, Taylor Casey. Yeah, Taylor, Taylor had a big game for the Highlanders yesterday. Really uh, provided a spark off the bench as Jamima gets the ball down low. Oh! Ooh, very nice finish by Jamima. She was defended well by Anderson, but just went up and over her. Yeah, uh, tremendous inbounds uh, pass from Molina. I believe it was Molina who threw that one in. I believe so. Yeah, and uh, they had a little trouble with that yesterday, but uh, no troubles yet this uh, so far today. Miles Willis has it. She'll put up the three, ah. and it is good. Miles Willis gets the scoring started for the Townies with a three-pointer. 19 to three is the lead as Pimentel Ooh. trying to go coast to coast here. She's fouled as she goes into the paint. We'll see who that goes against as two Charlestown defenders were right there as Pimentel went to the basket. Well, that's one way to slow down Molina is to tie her up completely. That's going to go against number one, Leslie Del Carmen. That's her first personal foul. Three team fouls now on the Townies. As cutting to the basket is Casey. Her shot is up. It's no good. Nice inbounds there. Mm -hmm. As Carmen Del Carmen was able to pull it away from Pimentel on the rebound. Yeah, you can see that uh, the Highlanders are just staying home, playing some good defense here, uh, playing some nice zone. Miles Willis' shot is no good. Goes out of bounds. It'll be the Lady Highlanders' ball. Yeah, uh, if uh, the Townies are going to rely on long distance shooting, this is going to be a long day for them. It's Destiny now with the ball. Beautiful pass down to Jamima. She gets her on the left block and Jamima finishes. Good positioning by everybody involved. Jamima knew that she needed the breakdown uh, and head towards the post. And she did just that. And uh, Destiny seeing her. And oh, look at this. We got Taylor coming yeah, up Taylor with the turnover. Taylor with the steal there. Casey drives it in. She <laughs> goes up for the shot. It is no good. She is fouled, though. The blocking foul called against Del Carmen. That's going to be her second personal foul, the fourth team foul on the Townies. Yeah, I like it. Go up hard and get the foul. Even if the Charles ball doesn't go in, you're going to get a couple of shots and get the other team in foul trouble. They've already got two fouls on number one. So Taylor Casey now going to the basket. There you see that powerful drive by Taylor. Free throw is up. Rolls out of the rim. No good. Checking into the game right there for the Townies. Monique Duncan back into the game. Dale Carmen will take a seat with her two fouls. Taylor's second shot up, no good. Jamima Joseph taps it to herself and she goes up and puts it in. Just a clinic right there by Jamima Joseph as she's able to use her height and her athleticism to tip it to herself and finish with the bucket. Ah, you thought she was finished singing, but she's not. Beautiful nice. tune there. Yeah, see? Oh, see, I set you up right there for you. <laughs> yeah, set it up, I'll knock it right down. <laughs> hey, we're even working well together today. All things are coming up, Lady There Highlanders. you go, absolutely. As there's Duncan driving the baseline, her shot is up, it's no good. Destiny comes away with the rebound, feeds it up to Sabatino. Sabatino defended by Miles Willis, who did not want to pick up a second personal foul, so Sabatino able to drive it all the way down, they'll re reset the offense. It's Destiny with the drive down the lane, ball's knocked away. Nice defensive play there, active hands by Cynthia Shine. Yeah, but you got to love what the Lady Highlanders are doing when they put the ball on the floor. They're beating them with the first step, and then they're just committing straight down through as Ivy Richardson checks in, and she's going to do the inbound pass here. Yep, Miranda Mar Melanson also checking into the game. The inbounds looking for Molina underneath the basket. She's able to control it and put it up and in. Nicely done by the Lady Highlanders. Everything just clicking right now. 25 to 3 your score. One minute remaining here in the first quarter of play. As they feed down to Duncan, she'll kick it back out to, to uh, DeLeon. DeLeon's shot is no good from the right wing. As Ivy comes away with the rebound, feeds it up to Sabatino, and they're going to set the offense. Yeah, slow it down here. You don't need to get uh, fast break points every single time out. Nice. Nice but give and go there. Sabatino and Pimentel working well together. Melanson gets the rebound. She's fouled, uh, though. Oh, no they're going to call the travel travels. Melanson shuffled her feet. Oh, uh, I think that's a little nitpicky, but all right. Trying to get Miranda on the uh, board early here as the uh, six man is out there trying to provide a spark for her team. Let's see if she can do it on the defensive end. Miles Willis defended by Sabatino, showing some nice ball control there as her left handed runner is good Miles in the paint. Back the other direction quickly, Melina Pimentel 
Just going straight through the town. He fires it up and in as it kisses the glass. Oh, beautiful play from the coast to coast. Uh, Molina, just excellent, excellent uh, job weaving through the defenders there and getting a good shot. De Leon's shot is no good. Rebound fought for and controlled by Pimentel. Three seconds left in the period. And that will do it here in the first quarter of play as the Lady Highlanders have a 22-point lead by the score of 27-5. to And uh, that was the Pimentel and Joseph show there in the first quarter of play as Jamina Joseph ended up with eight points in the first quarter. And let me see here. Let me count up these Pimentel points. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 15 points for Melina Pimentel in the first period. Excellent play for the Somerville Highlanders. Yeah, and we're seeing a bit of it right here on the replay. Here's Melina going coast to coast right here with a nice layup. She had that happen for two or three times here uh, as we get the Molina montage. Yes, it is a Molina <laughs> montage. There's another one there, finishing very, very nicely. I love the vision from the Lady Highlanders, looking to get the ball up the court, beat the defense back. Uh, they've had that happen to them plenty of times in uh, the number of games that we've called for them. Nice to see them turn the tables a little bit here uh, and get off to the fast start. Nice 22-point yeah. lead. No doubt about it in terms of the way they're running the floor, and that's definitely how Coach O'Halloran wanted them to uh, wanted them to attack this team. As you can hear him over on the on the bench, every single time they pull down a defensive rebound, he's telling them to run the floor, get out ahead of it, get out there, pass the ball forward, and they're using that great vision. You saw a great pass there by Emily Sabatino in those uh, in those replays as she fed it down court to uh, Molina to finish, and that's you know that's how Molina got a lot of those points was getting out ahead of the transition and able to. Uh, trust on her teammates to feed her well, and she finished very, very well in those situations. Yeah, some nice crisp passing. We didn't see a lot of turnovers from the Highlanders uh, uh, in that quarter. Let's see if they can keep it up. And we liked what we saw from Jamima, uh, but she's going to start the second quarter on the bench to get a little bit of a rest, and hopefully they're going to bring her back out. Yeah, a little bit of a rest there. Sydney Ravella checking in as well, as the shot by Miles is no good. Nice Rebound came Milana. out to Charlestown. Yeah, Miranda Melanson got a hand on that one on the putback attempt. And there's a shot that's up and good for Simple Veda. Yeah, as we see, he's, oh. Ivy Richardson's going to get called for the travel there as she, a little stutter step as she tried to collect the ball and dribble with it. Yeah, she started going before she had the ball there and then just couldn't decide which foot was the one that she wanted to keep with. Miles Willis with it, feeds it off to Simple Veda. Sepulveda with the three-pointer, it's up, it's no good from the left wing. Backside rebound taken away by Monique Duncan. She turns around, fires the three, it's no good. Another weak side rebound for the Lady Townies. The shot is put up by Miles Willis. Another offensive rebound for the Townies. Miles Willis once again from three-point range. Her shot is no good, and they're going to get an over the back this time against the Townies, as that one's going to go against Berlingari. Yeah, I believe uh, Coach Howard is going to make a substitution here the next chance that he can to bring in a little bit more height. Here comes Jamima and uh, Cremoni taking Ivy out. Also taking a seat is going to be Taylor Casey. So back into the game, Jen Cremoni and also Jamima Joseph. Three-point attempt there for the Lady Highlanders, and it hits nothing but the bottom of the net from Sydney Ravella. Beautiful vision there from Molina as she sees Sydney open on the wing and is able to hit her, and she's able to connect and uh, make a great shot for the three-point basket. A 20-point lead here for the Lady Highlanders. Nice job de defensively there by Melanson as she cut off the baseline attack. Pimentel able to steal the ball away at midcourt, and she does what she's been doing, and that's finish. That's what we like to see from Molina. She's having herself an excellent game so far here in the consolation game of the Highlander. Hoop Fest, Holiday Hoop Fest. Holiday Hoop Fest. Yes. No doubt about that as the pass was knocked out of bounds. Monique Duncan couldn't handle the uh, mustard on that pass from Miles Willis. So the Lady Highlanders will get it on the turnover with a 32 to seven lead. Long pass by Cremone to Jamima. Feeds it back into Alejandro. Tries to get it back to Kiara Alejandro. Instead, turned over to the townies as Miles Willis quickly back the other direction. Feeds it to, to Sepulveda, or Sepulveda I should say. Back to Miles Willis. Miles Willis is one-handed runner from the baseline. No good. Jamima with the oh, rebound. Feeds go. it forward to Alejandro. Alejandro trying to control it. Gets it stolen by Miles Willis. She will go in. Only Jamima between her and the basket. Jamima's going to pick up the blocking foul. <laughs> As she made Miles Willis adjust her shot. Miles Willis did not make the bucket, but she'll go to the line shooting too. 
but ex excellent effort to get back on defense there and disrupt the shot by Jam Jamima as she gets back and uh, is able to cause the miss. Uh, does pick up the foul though, but we asked what was going to look like if Jamima didn't get into early foul trouble. Now we know, and it turns out it's a 25 point lead. Yeah. So yeah, let's, let's, let's keep that up. Yeah, keep that stuff up right there. Yeah. As Miles Willis makes her first of two free throws. Yeah, Jamima been in the you know, first, for picking up her first foul right now. You know, she had two fouls by the three minute mark yep. of the uh, first quarter yesterday. Yeah, she's definitely an asset out there, especially on the low block. Uh, she's proven that she can grab the rebounds whenever she wants to, especially against this county team that lacks a little bit of height. Miles Willis made both free throws, makes it a 32-9 lead for the Lady Highlanders. Jen Cremoni at the top of the key, feeds it off to Alejandro, feeds it down to Jamima. Jamima gets position on the left block and finishes. That's all. That's what it's all about right now, is finding uh, the position, uh, the person in position to make a bucket, and Jamima has constantly found herself down there and has been able to put the ball in the hoop. Tony's trying to work their uh, their offense. Great job by Cremoni right there. She was able to collapse on the person with the ball. Back down the other direction. The shot is up. It's no good by Ravella. Miles Willis quickly the other way. Her shot is no good on the mid-range jumper. Cremoni comes away with the rebound. Thinks about going up ahead. Instead, she'll dribble it forward. I think that's the right move. You don't need to push it every single trip up the floor. Ravilla looking down low, able to find Jamima Joseph. She gets the roll into the bucket. Amazing pass, great vision, and a great catch down uh, on the low block by Jamima, who has been very exciting to watch. How many points she have? Uh, right now, Jamima with uh, tw with uh, 12 points. Wow, it's quite impressive. Absolutely, no question about it. You gotta, if you're Coach O'Halloran right now, you got to like what you're looking at. There's not much to complain about in that timeout huddle. Uh, as your team's out there, you know, they're ball hawking uh, like they did last year, but they're putting the, uh, the ball in the hoop uh, at a much better rate as we see Jamima go up, right up. And the passing has been crisper. Uh, the finishing has been better. It's just been all Lady Highlanders from uh, the jump here. Well, it's, you know, it, defensively, Jamima presents such a difficult challenge to a team uh, like Charlestown that doesn't have a lot of height. Because what we're seeing is we're seeing that the defensively they're trying to they're trying to front her, they're trying to stay in front of her in reference to where the ball is, and all she's doing is drifting away behind, mm -hmm. getting enough distance there, and the passes are perfectly placed for her to be able to catch it, turn around, and go up to the bucket. But when you look at the other opportunity of possibly staying underneath her towards the basket, she's got too much height. She would just simply catch the ball, turn around, and put up the shot. Yeah, we saw it yesterday, and the Highlanders were on the opposite side of things. That's exactly right. With the O'Connor sisters uh, from Hampshire. Uh, now, uh, seeing the, uh, the shoes on the other foot, they're uh, dipping into that playbook, and it's working out for them. Absolutely, no doubt about it. So the Townies trying to work their offense. Miles Willis has it on the right wing. Trying to find a way to drive, calls for a little bit of help. Passes it off to 21, that is Cynthia Shine. Her shot is no good, but she's foul. It's gonna go against Jen Cremoni. That's gonna be her Little second foul personal foul. Oh, they called it a Sydney. Oh, they called it on Ravella. My bad. That is her first personal. Shine's first shot is no good. One thing that uh, we haven't really talked about yet is the footwork. The footwork down low by everybody on the Highlanders has been excellent as we and the lane violation there. Shine stepped on the line as she shot the free throw. So the bucket was no good, even though it was no good anyway. <laughs> and the Lady Highlanders will come away with it. Look at that. There's Ravilla with the shot. The three pointer oh, is good. Oh, do we have a long range shooter? Do uh, we have a long range shooter? We have a long range shooter right there from the right wing. Four minutes remaining here in the half. 30 point lead for the Lady Highlanders, 39 to 9. Sepulveda with the ball, she'll try to feed it down low, kicking right there as Jamima ended up kicking that ball. So we're gonna reset the shot clock and the Townies will inbound to the right of the basket. I like them putting Jamima on the inbounds. Yes, Sepulveda with the shot, it's no good. Rebound batted around, Shine comes away with it. Gets it over to Miles Willis. Miles Willis trying to break down this defense. 
Feeds it off to Shine. Her shot is up from the baseline and it bounces around and bounces home. Yeah, she had to send that, that one up with plenty of height. Uh, nice big arc on it, rainbow shot. Managed to go in for her. Alejandro to... with the shot from the left side. No good. Miles Willis with the rebound. She will run the floor. Picked up nice defensively there. Her shot is no good, but Shine comes away with the rebound. Feeds it back to Miles Willis on the left wing. Looking for a little help over there. So they kick it out to the right wing. Sepulveda with the shot, with the uh, drive and the shot. It's no good. Cremoni comes away with a weak side rebound, and she is running the floor. Yeah. There we go. We like to see the Highlanders return to trying to drive the ball into the lane a little bit here. Although Sydney wants to take another uh, long bomb, she's more than welcome to. It's Alejandro does. in the other hand takes the uh, bomb from the left wing. No good. There's Jamima with the rebound. No good on her putback attempt. And they came away with the rebound was number 35, Michaela Anderson. There's Jen's second personal foul. I knew she'd pick one up. She's coming for it. So, she didn't want to make you wait. No, she didn't. That was nice of her. Mm -hmm. Two personals now against Jen. That's five on the Lady Highlanders. Important for the Lady Highlanders not to be complacent here with the big lead. Uh, you have to keep driving the ball into the lane, uh, look for the open pass, and uh, don't get complacent on defense. Sepulveda with the ball, nowhere to go on that penetration, so she feeds it back to Miles Willis. Miles Willis pulls up from the top of the key. Her shot is no good. Yeah, Lady for, Highlanders will inbound. Yeah, forcing the outside shot. That's what they need to do. Stay at home. Uh, don't overcommit on D. There's Destiny with the ball. She will pull it back out, reset the offense. Oop. Trying to feed it down to Ivy Richardson. A little miscommunication there. Ivy cut just a little bit early towards the basket before the pass was thrown. Yeah, I think she was looking for the pass to lead her in and it was coming to the outside shoulder. Uh, a little bit of miscommunication, as you said, but uh, they're young players. They haven't played a lot together, so hopefully as the season continues, we'll see that uh, clear up a little bit. Ivy getting some good minutes here. Oh, definitely, absolutely, some really good minutes. Uh, you know, with a lead like this, it gives you the opportunity to get those younger players those minutes. As they feed uh, Duncan down on the left block, her shot is no good. Nice job by the Lady Highlanders as Taylor Casey came away with the rebound and she was fouled on the reach in. Yeah, I like the rotation that uh, Coach Howard's established here. She's got uh, two of the upperclassmen, two of the captains out there pretty much at all times, as you can see. Uh, Emily and Melina are out there right now uh, with the younger squad, which is great. And getting them to uh, play together and giving yourself many options as they just a great look to Molina. Really oh. nice give and go there. Ivy with the putback, able to clean it up Richardson, and do the damage and go into the line for a third. Ah, yes, excellent. Her first points, I believe, as uh, a member of the varsity team here for the Lady Islanders, Ivy. Uh, and she's got a chance for uh, the and one. Yeah, absolutely. At the line for the and one. 30 point lead still here for the Lady Highlanders, 41 to 11. A minute 45 remains in the half. Ivy's free throw is no good. And the Townies come away with the rebound as Duncan was able to come away with it. It's knocked out of bounds by Pimentel. I'd like to see that the ladies uh, are keeping their hands active, even here with uh, the double digit lead, 30 point lead. Uh, that's what they're known for is their defense, and they're also can't get away from that. Miles Willis is going to be fouled there by Sabatino. So that's going to be Emily's first personal foul. It's the 16th foul against the Lady Highlanders. Yeah. Minute 33 remaining here in the quarter. Pimentel just got a little bit of a fingertip on that, but not enough to do any damage as Miles Willis has it on the right wing. A little crossover there. Kicks it back to Shine. Shine back to Sepulveda. I love what the Lady Highlanders are doing, collapsing on the passing lanes, making them work it around the uh, top of the key. Miles Willis gets a little bit of daylight. She'll drive into the paint. Her runner is no good. And Taylor Casey comes away with the rebound. <laughs> Casey picks up a uh, screen there from Sabatino down to the left wing. There's Destiny with the shot, no good. And the rebound pulled down by Anderson. Miles Willis. Kicks it off to Sepulveda. Sepulveda with the shot from the right wing. It's no good. Anderson gets the rebound, feeds Sepulveda again. Her shot is up. It's no good. And Melina Pimentel thought it was out of bounds off of 
the townies, but it actually, the referee is saying, went off of the Lady Highlanders. Well, I'd like to see a replay on that, but that's all right. We'll take his word for it. Oh, nice. Yeah. Pimentel gets the rebound off the baseline jumper, feeds Casey. Casey drives into the paint, oh. her shot up. It is no good, but she is fouled. And Sepulveda will pick that one up. That's all right, put another foul in uh, the ledger for the townies. Keep racking them up. And Sepulveda, there's that replay you were asking for. I did not see any contact by the Lady Highlanders. There, I'm shocked. But yeah, I know. Well, they can't get everything right. Can't get, yeah, well, you know, you would, you would hope, though. Yeah. Sepulveda with the foul. That will be her second, by the way. The eighth team foul on the townies. We'll file it with the uh, league office, I'm yes. sure. We'll see what they say in Secaucus. Taylor's first free throw is up. It is good. Taylor's second shot is up, and it is good. You gotta like what the Lady Highlanders are doing here. They're being consistent, hitting their free throws when they can, uh, playing some excellent defense, lockdown D, not letting the ball get down in the paint. It's been excellent, excellent first half for the Lady Highlanders. Shine fed that one off to Duncan, back to Shine over to Sepulveda, and they feed it to Miles Willis. Really great job by Sabatino staying in front of Miles Willis. So that one's out of bounds. Shine could not find Duncan in that right corner. Uh, Sabatino's doing a phenomenal job. She's at the very top of that zone defense mm -hmm. that the Lady Highlanders are using. It's basically a 1 2 2 defense that they're using. And she's applying that pressure to Miles Willis and preventing her from driving. Yeah. As the pass goes off of Sabatino's hands, out of bounds with 6.5 seconds remaining in the half. Yeah, she was looking to move with it before she actually secured the pass, and it just bounced right off her hands. I've had that happen a bunch of times. Oh, yeah. I mean, can't really blame that. But it, uh, good look. You just have to convert on it. Oh, Shine with a long <laughs> three-pointer at the buzzer as she picks up the uh, three points there. It makes it a 43-14 to 14 lead for the Lady Highlanders as we go to halftime here at Brune Fieldhouse. Your Highlanders lead the townies of Charlestown by the score of 43 to 14. You are watching Somerville Lady Highlander basketball on Somerville Educational Channel 15. No doubt about it. And we are back here at Brune Field House. As uh, you are watching Somerville Lady Highlanders action on Somerville Educational Channel 15. The Lady Highlanders leading here at halftime by the score of 43 to 14 against the townies of Charlestown. A great first half for the Lady Highlanders will hit the high points in terms of scores. Hit the uh, Townies high scorers first. The Townies high scorer was uh, uh, Miles Willis, their captain and uh, major ball handler. Also Cynthia Shine with five points and uh, Zadiska. Zadiska. Uh, no, actually, that would be Yalitza Sepulveda. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, got the wrong one with two points. Uh, over on the uh, Lady Highlanders side, the leading scorer for the hey, Lady Melina. Highlanders is Melina Pimentel, who just said hi to us. 17 points in the first half. Jamima Joseph, 12 points yep. in the first half. 17, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> she knew it. Six points for Sydney Ravella uh, <laughs> off of, of two three-pointers. <laughs> and uh, rounding out the scoring, Taylor Casey, as well as Jen Cremone, uh, Ivy Richardson, and Emily Sabatino, each with two. A little, little conversation there with uh, Melina before she inbounded. Yeah, she wanted to check her stat sheet. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jamima just added to hers with a beautiful finish there off of a very nice pass as she cut to the basket to open the scoring here in the second half. Yeah, smiles all around for the Lady Highlanders. Great first half of basketball. Let's see if they can continue, continue it here in the second half. Quick oh, hands nice. there. Melina Pimentel knocks it away. Sabatino comes away with it. She's looking to finish. Couldn't quite finish with the right hand. <laughs> Oh. Pass from Cremoni going back out. Hey, you got yourself a, a Ooh, nice little... shoot. <laughs> I you, lost control. Wow, you, you need to work on your ball handling I do still, need to sir. work on my ball handling. That was, that was. I, want, I need to talk to whoever Cremoni and uh, Pimentel have been talking to to help with their right. ball handling because yeah. they've been excellent. We got to get you some pointers. That was embarrassing. It was my left hand. <laughs> it was with my left hand. There's a shot by Sabatino, top of the key. No good. Sepulveda comes away with the rebound. Oh. As... I believe she will be the last one to touch it. Yeah, and she takes a seat over there in the uh, first row of the bleachers. Uh, Molina with some great defensive pressure to knock her out of bounds there. Oh, we're not quite ready. 
<laughs> there we go. Quick change there by Charlestown as they were making a quick substitution, bringing in Micaiah Anderson, yeah, number 35. Just, wanted to get the ball out. She wanted to get running. Uh, she's having too much fun out here. That's what they've been doing all day long is running with the ball. It's Molina now with the ball. Kicks it off to Cremoni on the left wing. Cremoni back over to Pimentel from the left. Her three-pointer is up. Ooh. No, as a two-pointer. Her foot toe was on the line. So a two-pointer there from Molina. I hope she'll keep track of that count since she's keeping track of her own scoring. Right. She'll argue with us later about it. Yeah, probably so. She can argue with the ref, though. 47-14 <laughs> lead here for the Lady Highlanders. Just looking for Molina to keep getting her looks on offense and keep up the pressure on defense as all the Lady Highlanders have been playing some great D. Uh, there you go, they got it down low to uh, Berlin Gary and she's able to finish there. So they work the ball down low, a little change from what they were doing in the first half. Sabatino out on the right wing with it, feeds Jamima, and Jamima goes up, and it's good, and she'll go to the line. Yeah, Jamima's just a freshman, we were talking about it during the break, and uh, she's showing a lot of promise uh, and it's going to be a great four years here for uh, the Lady Highlanders if uh, she keeps getting involved. You can see it down low with her footwork. That was just fluid, getting the ball straight up and uh, getting it up off of her shot. We haven't seen that in a while yep. uh, for any of the Lady Highlanders. It's great to see some low post players that can dribble. No doubt about that. As Jamima's shot is up. It is no good. She tried oh. to finish the old school three-point play. She'll get called for the uh, over the back there. She tried to get her own oh, rebound. That's going to be her second personal foul. Yeah, that's a silly foul, but you know, you appreciate the exuberance. She's trying to get out there and show a little bit of hustle, but you still got to play within yourself. And picking up the silly fouls, especially when you're the best low post player out in the floor right now, you got to stay out there. That's uh, that's key. No lead is exactly safe. Huge change here for Charlestown as Duncan brought that one all the way around from the baseline. Her shot was no good as Destiny pulls up the rebound. Sepulveda has to go right through her hands to Molina. Molina with the ball trying to break him down. She'll do the skip pass back to the top of the key over to Sabatino. Right corner shot is up. It's no good. Oh, nice. There's Jamima knocking the ball back to Pimentel. Jamima getting position underneath. Gets the rebound again. Back out to Pimentel. Over to Destiny. Destiny drives it into the paint, and she's going to get called for the travel there as she picked up her dribble and stutter step. Some great instincts down low from Jamima. I know I'm singing her praises a lot, just like she sang the heck out of the national anthem at the beginning of the game, but she gets the ball down there, immediately looks to pass it back out to the uh, primary ball handler for the Highlanders, uh, Molina Pimentel. That's some great looks and just some great moves. Uh, it, it, it's really, really something to watch here. Duncan showing some ball handling skills there for Charlestown. She drove through the paint. Her shot was no good. The rebound bounces around. They feed it out to Sepulveda. Her shot is no good. Pimentel fighting for the rebound, and it goes off of Duncan, out of bounds, and the Lady Highlanders will have the ball. Big change right here offensively for, for uh, Charlestown as Miles Willis, number three, their uh, captain, not on the floor right now, their primary ball handler, and she has not been on the floor at all. She's been on the bench since the beginning of this half. Yeah, it looks like she might be nursing some sort of an injury over there uh, on the bench, and it's uh, she's leaving it up to her teammates to come out here and uh, try to provide the spark as they uh, get the steal here. Yeah, Sepulveda with the steal there, right into the passing lane, was able to pick it off. 49-16 is the Lady Highlander lead. Four minutes, 45 seconds left in the third quarter as Duncan's driving runner is no good. Rebound comes out to Sabatino. Go girls, go, 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 get out there. Sabatino content to uh, keep, keep it a little bit slower. She travels there. It's all right, she was trying to lead the break, waiting for her teammate to, uh, teammates to get down the edge of the floor and she uh, tried to be just a little bit too much. Yeah, I think she might have, uh, as we take a look at uh, Willis on the bench there, I think she might have taken an elbow to the jaw. Yeah, it looks like it, it looks like it. there's something wrong with the right hand side of her jaw there. She keeps the hand up there, she's drinking the water. Duncan holding it up right before half court, trying to find somebody. Nice job by Ivy Richardson getting in there, getting the hand in there and stealing the ball. And it will go out of bounds off of the townies. Nice. Keeping up the active hands, keeping up the defense. You got to keep up that effort. And uh, I'm providing the spark off the bench. Here comes Taylor. Taylor Casey into the game for Molina Pimentel. As Cremoni feeds it over to Casey. And Sabatino, this motion offense. Back over to Casey. Down to Cremoni in the right wing. Going down low, looking for Melanson. Melanson feeds it out to Sabatino. And we've got a foul there called against Charlestown. <laughs> 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 
Southside foul number 21, Cynthia Chain. As we get the reset here. We got uh, Charlestown player checking in, Jerry Ann DeLeon. The foul was against Cynthia Shine. That's her third personal foul. Second team foul against Charlestown here in the second half. Cremoni has it now at the top of the key. He feeds it over to Casey. Casey's shot is up. It is no good. And rebound fought for off of Ivy Richardson out of bounds. So Charlestown will have the ball. Yeah, we only got one starter or uh, two starters out there for the Lady Highlanders right now. You don't want to see them get complacent and settle for some outside shots, especially when they've been able to drive into the lane uh, with relative ease against uh, the townies. But uh, as long as they keep up the pressure on defense like they're doing here, things are looking good. Oh, Sepulveda tripped there. It's going to go against Taylor Casey. Oh, wait a minute. No, it's going to go against Jim Cremoni. So we'll foul number 20, Jennifer Cremoni. Well, that's going to be Time three against Jen. Around. Second team foul against the Lady Highlanders as well. Also, who had just checked back into the game for Charlestown in that offensive possession was Miles Willis. So she's back out on the floor now. Right, good to see that she's okay. Absolutely. So 49-16 lead for the Lady Highlanders. 326 remaining in the third quarter of play. It's going to be interesting to see what the Lady Highlanders do here playing with the big lead because that doesn't get the, it doesn't really happen that often. Uh, and to get to see uh, some of the younger players get out here and uh, build more of a uh, a rep with uh, the rest of uh, the Lady Highlanders, getting out there with the upperclassmen and the captains like uh, Melina and Emily and Jennifer. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if uh, the younger squad gets out there and gets to play as a unit. Uh, you can always develop your bench, uh, especially with the shooting that they have and seeing what you have on defense. We already know uh, that uh, there's some surprising uh, outside shooting from uh, Sydney Ravella, who came out. We'd like to see a little bit more from her. Uh, Jamima and Destiny have already proven what they can do. They're getting some uh, much needed breathers over on the bench. Let's see what the uh, end of the bench can do for the Lady Highlanders here and yeah. see if we can get them uh, a couple of possessions together. Absolutely, as we see uh, Melanson there, 13. Also Ivy Richardson, number 22. Sabatino there, number 31. Jin Cremoni on the floor as well. And finishing it off is going to be Taylor Casey, number 12. Charlestown inbounding. Sepulveda gets it out to Anderson. She loses the ball as Casey comes away with it. Some nice ball hawking. Like to see that uh, the entire roster is making that uh, focus. As Melanson will kick it back out to Casey. Casey defended tightly there by Sepulveda. Cremoni gets it. Nice. And feeds it over to Sabatino on the left wing. Sabatino's drive into the paint. Her shot is no good as Melanson fights for the rebound, but Sepulveda comes away with it. Oh. And Sabatino able to get body position there and steal the ball away from her. Excellent look. Back Great over position. to Taylor Casey. Taylor Casey takes the shot from the right wing. No good. Miles Willis almost had the rebound. And they finally did come away with it with uh, Cecilia Sorto getting the ball. Miles Willis now with it. Feeds Sepulveda. They play a nice two-person game. Mm -hmm. They've got the, the two ball handlers out at the top of the key for the townies, trying to move it around. And as they try to incorporate Jerry Ann De Leon. Very nice, very Thank nice. You. Thank you. I practiced. Absolutely. And there's De Leon <laughs> losing the ball as Taylor Casey able to pick her pocket. Looks forward to Jen Cremoni. Cremoni goes up for the layup, and it is good. Uh, as her sizable as fan section. The Cremoni section, always, always on hand and always very, very vocal. Yes. Always are great, greatly appreciated as well. The Cremoni crazies over the here. The Cremoni crazies, exactly. <laughs> Just under two minutes left here in the third quarter. 51-16 is your Highlander lead. It's Miles Willis fires up the shot. It is no good. It's nothing but air, so it goes out of bounds. Lady Highlander's ball. You got to appreciate the sustained effort on defense. You know, they're up above 50 points here. Uh, and are running away with this thing, and they could easily just coast and sit back and uh, try to get uh, some fancy trick shots for the rest of the quarter, but they're uh, staying with their principles and sticking with the defense. Quick hands, hustle, that's what we've come to expect from the Lady Highlanders. It's nice no to see question. That they can keep doing. As Ravella had it there, fed it to Ivy Richardson, who is fouled. Foul is going to go against Anderson. That's her first personal, I believe. The other thing that I'm really liking to see is that everybody's getting a hand on the ball. Mm. You know, they're passing it through to, through everybody. The ball doesn't stop anywhere. 
Taylor Casey tried to feed Ivy Richardson. Ball stolen away. Sepulveda down to Duncan on the right block. Duncan finishes there. Duncan for two. Not a single starter on the floor right now for the Lady Highlanders as Casey fed it over to Ravella, back over to Alejandro, over to Casey. Casey with the dribble drive penetration into the paint. She's fouled there. Got to like that look. Uh, Taylor's not scared to bring it into the paint. And, uh, she's shown that she can handle the ball. Uh, showing some pretty good footwork, and all she's got to do is put it all together and be able to get the shot up. But, you know, she did go in among the height that uh, Charleston has as Melanson gets the ball in. Up. Oh. Melanson on the inbound. Sepulveda <laughs> able to get a hand on that ball. Nice effort by Sepulveda over there as well. Not showing any quit. Got to appreciate that too. Minute seven remaining here in the third quarter. Ravello will be inbound, inbounding. Casey running the offense now for the Lady Highlanders. Alejandro has it. Her shot is up. It is no good. She's fighting oh, go. for her own rebound as she cut underneath Sepulveda and was able to get a tie ball situation on the alternating possession. It will go to the Townies. Uh, it doesn't matter about the huge lead. You see the heart and the hustle right there from Kiara, the senior. Diving for the ball, making the most out of her playing time. No doubt about it, just under a minute here remaining in the third quarter. 51-18 is the Lady Highlanders lead as Sepulveda will run the point for the Townies. Over to Miles Willis. Miles Willis, a little head fake. Her pass down to Duncan on the right wing, right block, I should say. Did not find her there. We have an over the back is the call. It's going to be called against Miles Willis. That's going to be her second personal foul. Fifth team foul against the Townies. As Alejandro has it. Looking over to Casey. Taylor Casey down to Melanson. Melanson on the baseline, dribbles it back outside, dribbles it back to the inside now. Her shot is up, it is no good, but she is fouled and she will go to the line looking to shoot two. Yep, showing no fear. That's what we've come to expect from uh, Miranda as she is able to get the ball down to the post and go right back 30, up Brianna with Hewitt. it. Got the shot off, didn't make it, but uh, she's going to to go to the line. A foul win against Brianna Hubert. It's a 16 foul now against the Townies. So Melanson's first shot is up and it is good. Making your free throws. It's basketball 101. I don't teach that, though. It's not a requirement. It should be, though. Yeah, it really should be. It's Melanson's second shot is no good. Maybe in summer school they'll let me teach it. Alejandro came away with the rebound as it was saved by Miles Willis out of bounds. Her shot is no good. Back over to Ravilla. Ravilla's bounce pass attempt to Melanson's picked off by Duncan. Back the other direction, Miles Willis. Miles Willis' shot is up and it is good. Just at the buzzer. So after three quarters of play, the Lady Highlanders leading this one by 32 points, 52 to 20, as we look to move towards the fourth quarter of play. And you pointed something out, Braden, how, you know, we know there's never any quit. There's always lots of hustle in the Lady Highlanders. That's, that's the way Coach O'Halloran coaches. That's the way his players play. There's never say die. There have been many situations, unfortunately, where they've been down by 30 points mm -hmm. and they never said die. Well, now it's completely reversed and we're seeing them ahead by 30 points and the excitement of it and the interest of it or the, the fun of it is we're seeing that they, they're not dying or, you know, they're not saying die or laying down or quitting in any way. Getting a lot of uh, bench players out there as well and lots of experience going on. Yeah, and that's great for the Lady Highlanders, especially with the youthful squad that they have out there. There's not a lot of upperclassmen, and even the upperclassmen that they do have, there's only two seniors. Uh, the, the captains are all juniors. They're going to be returning for the next year, but you have to build, uh, you know, the team and have them be able to play together, and this is invaluable. Uh, to get the squad out and even get the end of your bench out. And you can see it, there's 11 players for uh, the Lady Highlanders and they all have shown that they've been able to handle the ball. They've all uh, been very careful with the ball, not committing too many t turnovers. And it uh, bodes well for not only the rest of this season, but for the future of the Lady Highlanders. Uh, things are looking bright. No doubt about it, as you see a lot of that youth out there. We talked about Jamima Joseph and how strong she has been, just a freshman out there. And, uh, you know, the tri-captains for the team all are juniors. Yeah. So, you know, you have Destiny as well, who's, I believe, a sophomore mm -hmm. or a junior, actually. Junior. So you have four juniors as well as a really good player in Jamima jo Joseph. As Ravella's shot is up, it is no good. She has no fear of gunning from the outside. No, she doesn't. 
build on your point as you look at it, with, with the captains that you have uh, and the, the roles that they played on this team up through last year, they were supporting cast players. Although Molina, you know, wasn't necessarily the first option on offense. She is this year, and she's definitely taken that mantle and has done the most with it. It's Taylor Casey there, dribbles around, almost loses control, able to get it back in bounds to Ivy Richardson, a tie up there, and on the alternating possession, it will go to Charlestown. Yeah, you'd like to see the young players learn from the example uh, that's being let out there by the captains. And, you know, if you talk about our three captains, Melina Pimentel, Emily Sabatino, and Jennifer Cremoni, they're all heart, they're all hustle. Mm -hmm. uh, and for the young squad, uh, the young players to learn from them is uh, just great for Coach O'Halloran because you're really building that mindset into the team. No doubt about it. It's Sepal Veda with the dribble drive down the right-hand side of the lane. Her one-handed runner is no good, and Melanson comes away with the rebound. She'll get it off to Taylor Casey. Taylor Casey now handling the ball. She's running the floor. Picked up by Sepulveda. She feeds Alejandro down to the right, the right block. Her shot is up. It's no good. Rebound being fought for. It goes off of the Lady Highlanders. So the Townies will have the ball. That was a good look. Everybody was coming back towards the ball. It didn't exactly result in what you wanted it to, but, you know, you can see... Uh, you know, the right idea was there. Sepulveda now handling the ball, feeds it off to Miles Willis. Miles Willis defended by Ravella. Her oh. shot is up, it's no good. Miranda Melanson with a strong re rebound there. And Ravella back the other direction now, very quickly for the Lady Highlanders, and she is fouled by Sepulveda. Some nice uh, up tempo offense, continually trying to push the ball up, and you can see that Sydney can dribble the ball too. Yep. Uh, Absolutely. And we've already seen that she can uh, hit the three. So it's going to be interesting to see what the rotations are like as uh, the season continues because Coach howard has got a lot more options than he had even last year. No doubt about that as Destiny Augustine checking into the game. First shot by Ravella is no good in the one-on-one -on -one situa one -on -one situation. And the putback attempt no good by Melanson. Back the other direction, Duncan doing a little cherry picking, but she couldn't quite <laughs> get it off the tree. Yeah. Goes out of bounds off of the townies. Will be Somerville's ball. Yeah, you can hang back as much as you want. I used to do that. That was uh, the patented uh, Moriarty maneuver. That was the Moriarty maneuver? Yeah, just, you know, why bother running back when they're just going to throw it up to me and I can make the layup? They don't like it when you do that too often, though. No, not very much. Especially when you're down 20. There's Ravella <laughs> with the shot from the right wing. No good. Rebound comes away to Hubert. And they get it to Duncan. 30-point lead for the Lady Highlanders, 5.50 remaining in the game. Gotta love it, they're running back on defense, they're uh, maintaining the focus. Miles Willis with the three-pointer and it Miles is Willis good. For three. There's Ravella Oop. feeding Alejandro. Not quite ready for that pass though, and out of bounds off of Alejandro going the other direction to the townies. Yeah, Sydney threw the pass and then shouted to Kiara to be like, oh hey, by the way, passing it to you. Uh, and that's just a little something that's uh, going to come with a little bit more practice, a little more game time. That's what they have to build on here. Well, and you got a feeling, you just kind of got a feeling that they needed a little bit of a spark coming off the bench. So they're just going to bring two of their three captains off of the bench. Emily Sabatino, Jen Cremoni back into the game just to provide a little late spark here for the Lady Highlanders. Especially Sabatino with her defense at the top, mm -hmm. at, at the top of the key has been tremendous throughout this game. Right, yeah. It, it's really been an unsung thing. We haven't even talked about Destiny because she hasn't really been out on the floor that that often they haven't needed her right but uh, you can see that uh, Miranda has been getting uh, uh, some great playing time here uh, as sh she's a senior and she's leading the squad out there and now that the captains have come back out we see some leadership from the upperclassmen Ooh. so there's a shot by Anderson no good Melanson comes away with the rebound she tried to feed it out to Jen Cremoni for the outlet, but instead it was stolen. Miles Willis couldn't finish there. She was defended well by Sabatino. Once again, Sabatino just been tremendous on the defensive end. Yeah, unsung uh, defensive work here. Oh, Miles able. Willis wow. picking the pocket of Emily Sabatino right there. And Cremoni is <laughs> going to get called for the foul. She got a little bit of a push on the back of Miles Willis. And uh, that's going to be Jen's fourth personal foul. Oh, it's going to be the third 20, team Jennifer foul Cremoni. against the Lady Highlanders here in the second half. Yeah, my favorite thing about Jen Cremoni is just whenever she commits Time a foul, she immediately smiles and apologizes to uh, whoever she bumped. There's the foul, there's the <laughs> smile, and there's the, oh no, yeah, I'm oops, sorry. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Sorry about that. Didn't mean that. 
but uh, Lady Highlanders are playing uh, with some pep out there. Uh, the smiles help as well, but uh, they've been able to uh, put together some nice strings here. Uh, been a little sloppy here in the fourth quarter, mm -hmm. but you can expect that when you're missing the starters out there. Right. Uh, you've got uh, the young squad trying to, uh, you know, uh, build some com camaraderie out there. Uh, it'd be interesting to see what uh, Coach O'Halloran comes out with here as uh, it's not been exactly a run for Charlestown, but they've been able to put a couple of points here. Uh, see if he wants to uh, squelch that or let the uh, young squad keep uh, working together. Well, I mean, I think one thing that he did specifically was get uh, Emily Sabatino back out there because one one change that they made in Charlestown's offense that I've seen is they're not having uh, Miles Willis control the ball up the floor. Mm -hmm. They're actually having either Duncan or, um, or Sepulveda control the ball up the floor. That lets Miles Willis be an off choice, yeah. be that first or second pass, and then she's able to make something happen with it. And that seems to be what's happening is she's able to put four, five points, I should say, on the board here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, the read direction the reset uh, within the possession it can make all the difference especially when you get the ball moving the other way it creates a bunch of different lanes for you and the Lady Highlanders Ooh. out of the zone they're in the man-to-man -man, but uh, uh, Cynthia Shine did not care as the rainbow shot goes in there's Destiny from the right corner her shot is no good there's Melanson with the rebound her putback attempt is no good nice. Anderson gets the rebound but Destiny able to steal the outlet pass Sabatino with the runner, it's no good. Destiny comes away with the rebound. She's gonna try a baseline drive up and under. No good as well. Oop. Rebound being fought for. Shine tied up, it looks like, with Destiny. And on the alternating possession, the Lady Highlanders will keep control of the ball and inbounds on the left-hand side of the basket. Ah, uh, that golden shining example of a rule. <laughs> the inbounds comes to Cremoni on the left wing. Oh, trying to get the ball down to Destiny Augustine. It's important for the Lady Highlanders not to try to get too cute here and not try to get uh, stay with the basics, make clean, crisp passes, do what got you here, you know, uh, ball control, uh, not turning the ball over, making sure that your passes are open. Nice look. Great look by Augustine, finding cutting Sabatino, couldn't quite finish. Melanson's put back attempt, no good. Rebound being fought for underneath. Taylor Casey involved with that one. Couldn't quite get it though. As you can see a little bit of frustration there by Taylor on the uh, tie, tied up ball, the jump ball, alternating possession going back to the townies. We still have to deal with that roll? Yep. Man, I figured that out. You would have gotten rid of that by now. Oh well. Actually, I'm wrong about that. Taylor was called for the foul on that one. What? Yeah. That's her first personal. Fourth team foul against the Lady Highlanders is Sepulveda with the right-handed dribble down the right-hand side of the lane. Her run-handed runner is no good. Sabatino back the other direction. Looks up floor. Destiny gets the double dribble called against her. Yeah, you can see that she wanted to move the ball forward. She had Melanson open down in the low block, left all alone, uh, just waiting for the pass. And I think Destiny just tried to do a little too much there on her own. That's all right. Sepulveda now controlling the ball. 3.40 remaining in the game. Oh, nice. And there's Sabatino with that defense. She anticipated the pass, cut off the passing lane, and then on the comeback pass, on the delayed pass attempt, able to knock it away to Jen Cremoni. Yeah, she made them adjust their game plan, and when she uh, made them look for a second pass, Charlestown foul number 21. She said, nope, Giant. came back and uh, got a second attempt at a steal and made it work for her. Sabatino's been excellent out there today. Absolutely, no question about it. As uh, Jen Cremoni at the line for one and one, Cynthia Shine picking up her fourth personal foul. It's the eighth team foul against the Townies. It's Cremoni's first free throw is up and it's good. First points of the fourth quarter for the Lady Highlanders. Checking back into the game, you got Melina Pimentel coming back in, as well as Chiara Alejandro. Sabatino takes a seat, and Taylor Casey taking a seat. Cremoni's second shot is up, bounces around, no good. Willis comes away with the rebound. Down he's Long got... pass to Shine, oh. Shine's off balance shot is no good. Cremoni fighting for the rebound, Pimentel in there as well, but Duncan comes away with it. Yeah, the Townies had two players back. Figured that they would get a quick bucket off that end, but uh, the Highlander defense showing There's off. The defense right there by Destiny, as she's able to alter the first shot and block the second shot, and came away with the ball. 
She was looking for a foul there, didn't quite get it, but goes out of bounds off of the townies. Yeah, that can't be the first look for Destiny. She, uh, she looks up and looking for the refs to save her. She's got to get after that ball. I don't care how much you're up by. Uh, you can't let it uh, assume that it's going to be uh, called your way out. Nice look, though. There's Melanson with the shot. She's double teamed on that right block. Knocked out of bounds off of Melanson, so it will go to Charlestown. I like the looks that Destiny's trying to uh, make happen. They're definitely uh, optimistic. Sepulveda with the shot. It's no good as Alejandro gets the rebound, hands it off to Pimentel. Pimentel trapped near half court, gets it off to Destiny. Destiny drives into the paint. Her turnaround shot is no good. Duncan with the weak side rebound. Duncan feeds Shine. Shine with the shot. No good on the weak side. Ravella comes away with the rebound. Sydney will pass it off to Pimentel. Pimentel looking to get past Shine. Shine knowing she has four fouls, doesn't want to leave the game yet. Pimentel back over to Destiny. Destiny down the lane, nice. and there is the finish Augustine. for yeah. Destiny Augustine. Destiny's been looking to make that basket happen for a couple possessions now. She's just looking to get uh, something going so she can find her footing, and she finally did it. Uh, we know that she can score that bucket, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm glad that she was able to get it. But looking for a secondary pass, I know you're trying to uh, get your points in when you can, but uh, she finally was able to do so. Let's so hope that uh, they continue to look. Uh, for other options as well. Just over two minutes left in the game. Lady Highlanders leading 55 to 27 over the townies of Charlestown as Duncan takes the three pointer from the left corner. No good. Shine comes away with a long rebound. She'll feed it back out to Miles Willis. Miles Willis looking to break down Pimentel on the dribble. Instead, she'll pull up. The jumper is no good. Jamima back in the game, but can't quite control the ball. It's knocked out of her hands by Charlestown, Wait. and the Lady Highlanders will have possession. A little conversation here by the referees. We'll just, we'll just set the uh, Lady Highlanders on the floor right now. Melina Pimentel along with, um, let's see here, who else is out there? We have Sydney, Sydney Ravella. Ravella um, also Kiara Alejandro, Jamima Joseph, as well as Taylor Casey. Oh, and it. they're going to reverse that call. You got to like it when the refs get together. Try to get the call right. That's important. And Molina coming out of the game. Ivy Richardson checking into the game. A minute 46 left. It is Charlestown's ball as Duncan will inbound. Feeds it to Shine. Go nice Jamima. anticipation by Jamima Joseph there. She cut into the passing lane. Oh. Nice ball control, the spin, <laughs> and the finish as Jamima just puts on a clinic there. Yeah, fabulous freshman getting out there and doing it all herself uh, and making it look easy. 30 nice point moves. lead again for the Lady Highlanders. Oh. Ooh. Well, there's Miles Willis saying, I'll take that, I'll see that, I'll, I'll uh, raise you a off-balance left-handed shot. Sure, and she was looking for the foul, too, and she might have had a case. She could have had a case, but no case was made. Ivy Richardson passes it off to Jamima. Jamima with the shot, no good. <laughs> Richardson looking for the rebound, tips it out to Casey. Taylor Casey with the ball now, a minute left in this game. Oh. As Shine steals the ball away from Casey, and Casey called for the foul. <laughs> she cannot believe it. Nope. Uh, neither can I. Complete uh, look of shock on Taylor's face. Yeah, trying to get the ball back. That was a heated little oh, exchange wow, right there. Uh, a lot of hand checking going on. But uh, turnover going against the Lady Highlanders. First one in a while. Yeah. Lady Highlanders sh shifting into a man to man. And Ooh. Sepulveda just drives right through the Sepulveda defense and finishes it. Nice, pretty runner. There's Ravella over to Alejandro, looking to feed Casey. Instead, it's stolen by Sepulveda. It's a two-on-one, Sepulveda and Tyler Willis. And Miles Willis in, uh, instead. I'm sorry, Ravella, though, comes away with it. Yeah, Kiara had some great hands up as the puck passed. Yeah, great hands Ooh. there. Now we're getting pushy. Shine not happy. Being told to relax by her coach. Showing a little bit of frustration out there, which is understandable. Jamima picks up her third personal foul. As Miles Willis gets the inbounds, goes up, she's fouled as she goes up for the shot. This could be the fourth personal against uh, Jamima. 
We'll see who it goes up against. Yep, so it's going to be the fourth personal foul against Jamima Joseph. We'll see if uh, Coach O'Halloran with 25 seconds wants to go ahead and pull her out of the game. It doesn't look like so. Going to keep her in. She's played an excellent game. The one thing that we're going to have no to look question. forward to uh, and look out for as the season progresses is trying to keep her out of foul trouble because she's an incredible asset to have out on the floor but doesn't do you any good if she's uh, stuck on the end of the bench. No doubt about that as Miles Willis makes the first. And if it, if it wasn't for silly fouls, I don't think Jamila would probably have two. Yeah, probably so, actually. Second one in and out. Rebound by Ravellis. And she is fouled there as she was dribbling down floor. That's going to go against number 12, Sepulveda. That'll mm -hmm. be her fourth personal. Charlestown foul number 12, Yelitsa Sepulveda. And as we wind down here, we're looking for the Lady Highlanders to uh, continue to play uh, throughout the whistle as uh, Sydney takes the free throw. Ravella's shot no good there on the one and one. A little cherry picking there by Duncan. And once again, tree came up empty. <laughs> Duncan with the weak side Ow. rebound up. No good, no good again. Oh, there we go. And rebound comes out to Taylor Casey. Six seconds left on the clock, two on one. Casey oh. will take it herself and she is fouled by Miles Willis. Yeah, hard foul on Taylor. She catches uh, elbow to the face, but uh, comes up smiling. Looking at chops, getting ready to take the free throws. 3.9 seconds left on the clock. You see the uh, Lady Highlander bench there, some smiles. Just an excellent game all around for the Highlanders. They came out here, did what they needed to do. Uh, ball control, like we talked about, making some crisp passes, and they were able to convert on their shots, yep. which is great. So Ravilla's free throw, first one is good. And considering that they're, uh, they, for the first time in the longest time that I can remember, have the height advantage, were able to convert on most of their rebounds as well. So Casey makes both free throws. Oh, wait a minute. They're gonna call a lane violation, it appears. Ah. So the second one, no good, due to the lane violation. Refs are playing two to the whistle too. Yeah, that's right, 3.9 seconds left in the game. Sepulveda will not touch it for a while. She'll try to get the last shot, Miles Willis will. Her Whoa. shot is up. It is no good, and they oh! will do it. That's got. That's. that's I, I looked down at my sheet. I did not see what happened. I know. I know Cynthia Shine, who is that player, um, was very frustrated she's be earlier. She's ejected. I'm not totally sure what just happened. Though. Well, I can explain. Uh, she threw the Final ball into the back of uh, Taylor's uh, head uh, after the uh, after the bell. Uh, she's obviously very frustrated, but uh, there's no room for that in basketball. She's. Wow. Uh, just picked it up and gunned it as hard as she could right back, right to the back of her head. So as we uh, wait for the handshakes here and for everybody to settle down, yeah. uh, Coach is uh, trying to talk her off. Yeah, Coach Katrina Jackson over there talking her down. And sending as her to the showers. Right there, there it is. She didn't get her in the head, she got her actually in the right shoulder blade it looks like, but uh, absolutely ridiculous and no place for that, no question about it. As uh, Shine it looked like she was leaving, leaving the court area, she is going to go ahead as uh, Coach Katrina Jackson was able to corral her and get her to go into the uh, handshake line so that will be the end of the contest as uh, the Lady Highlanders come away with a victory and, and, and a great victory for the Lady Highlanders. Yeah absolutely it's, uh, it's too bad that it ended a little ugly there uh, but uh, like you said an excellent victory for the Lady Highlanders as they get their congratulations uh, on a well-deserved win here at the Field House and closing out the Holiday Hoop Fest in fine fashion uh, and on an uptick. Uh, that's a big win uh, showing that they come out here and hold home court. Uh, like they did, uh, and represent well in front of their fans. And everybody played well. I mean, you look uh, right down the sheet, and you're going to hit us up with the stats in a second, but you have to be super excited for what Jamima brought to the table. Uh, 1 through 11, everybody played well. Uh, the passing was great. Everybody was looking for the open man. Uh, and uh, even just the ball hawking on defense, even for a Highlander staple as it is, was unbelievable out here today. Uh, and just a big victory for the Lady Highlanders. Hopefully something that they can build on. And hey, we, we saw our first win of the season. We didn't see that till what, 20 games in? Wow. Yeah, absolutely, no question about it. We get a win today, a fantastic win 
for the Lady Highlanders as uh, they come away with a big victory today in the consolation game of the Highlander Hoop Fest. Uh, looking over the uh, leading scorers of the contest, uh, beginning over on the uh, townie side as Miles Willis, their captain, 17 points. Uh, Cynthia Shine, the uh, young lady who uh, had the outburst there at the end of the game, seven points. Uh, four points for Sepulveda, two points for Berlin Gary, and two points for Duncan. Uh, Duncan, lots of cherry picking. Yep. Not a lot of cherries coming off that tree for her. <laughs> um, on the other side for the Lady Highlanders, just a great offensive effort by Melina Pimentel with 19 points, leading all scores. 18 points for Jamima Joseph. Great in all facets of the game for both of them, mm -hmm. not just on the offensive end, but also defensively. Um, also scoring for the Lady Highlanders, seven points for Sydney Ravella. Two of those, some huge three-pointers in the first half. Three points for Jen Cremoni. Three points for Taylor Casey. Two points for Destiny Augustine. Augustine. We'll see a lot more points points from her yep. later on in the season when when in the flow of the game you know she's very very important and will definitely score more throughout the throughout the year Ivy Richardson two points as well Miranda Melanson with one point and Emily Sabatino saving her for last two points for Emily but tremendously on the defensive side of the ball yeah if you had to talk about an MVP for the game you'd have to give it to Sabatino I think uh, you could also argue for Jamima uh, with the excellent uh, display on offense but you look at that roster three uh, that's nine players for uh, the Somerville Highlanders who got on the scoring sheet uh, and everybody contributed uh, 1 through 11 like we were talking about and that's exactly what uh, Coach Howard is going to want to see because you're going to need everybody uh, on this squad to contribute for them to be competitive and they were competitive today and in the blowout win really showed their stuff. No doubt about it they showed their stuff the opportunity for the younger players to get out onto the floor as well very very important great leadership from the three from the tri captains but also a great job by the younger players getting out there and showing what they can do. So the consolation game Third place team here at the Highlander Hoop Fest are the Lady Highlanders as they come away with a victory here at Bruin Field House against the Charlestown Townies. Final score of the game, the uh, Lady Highlanders 58, the uh, Townies 31. So uh, a great victory here. We'll look more forward to hopefully more. Uh, there was more basketball yet to come today as the uh, men's consular boys consolation game coming up right now than the girls championship game, Archbishop Williams versus Hampshire Regional later on this evening. And then of course, the Somerville boys playing later on tonight in the championship game as well. So a great day of basketball here at the Hoop Fest. It was a great way to open it up with the uh, Lady Highlanders victory. Thank you very much, Braden. It's been a lot of fun here at the Holiday Hoop Fest with you. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> I really appreciate it. And thank you everybody for watching as well. My name is Todd Harmon. He's Braden Moriarty. And we have been uh, bringing you Somerville Lady Highlanders basketball on Somerville Educational Channel 15.